This is a really messed up apple tree. And over the last three years, I've been trying to fix it. But it has great examples of everything that can be wrong with the tree and how you might want to prune it. This is a perfect example of a water sprout. You can see that it's growing at a 90 degree angle from the main branch that it's coming off of. And if you look closely down at the bottom here, you can see that there's sort of some, some wrinkly ridges of bark. And those ridges of bark contain special cells that are able to heal very quickly and close the wound that I make when I cut this branch off quickly before any disease or insects can get in. And what you want to do is you want to cut just outside of that sort of wrinkled beveled area and make a clean cut. And when you do that, this wound will heal closed very quickly. I actually probably cut this a little bit higher than I wanted to, but it gives you an opportunity to see um, that that sort of wrinkled area that will be where the wound closes in a brief period of time when you prune trees in the spring like this. This is an example of a crossing branch. Quite obvious, these two branches are rubbing on each other, and eventually one of them will break. Not only that, but you have a situation where you're going to have less air movement because there will be a lot of foliage in this area, so you want to get rid of this branch. Once again, it's a water sprout growing at a 90 degree angle, and it, it has no purpose, so it's got to go. You look for that wrinkled, thicker area of bark and you make a nice clean cut just outside of it. Here's a better example of that branch collar I was talking about. You can really see the difference between the collar and the stem. There's a distinct difference in color and also in texture. And if I use the tip of my pruner and get right on the edge, I can make a nice clean cut that'll heal over quickly. This is a stunning example of branches growing back inward towards the middle of the tree. This is a bad thing because you end up with reduced air circulation and apple trees are susceptible to quite a few different kinds of funguses. So it's best to remove anything that looks like this. As a matter of fact, I might come back later and take off this whole branch. Um, there's quite a bit that's wrong here. There's this branch right here that needs to go growing back towards the center of the tree. And that will be leaving quite a large stub. Something like this needs to be removed with a handsaw or a lopper. This is the finished tree. And there actually are a few more branches that could technically be removed here. But I've put this tree through a lot in the last three years, and so I, it needs all the branches it can to make food for itself. But what I did is I went in and I got rid of the water sprout. I got rid of branches that were rubbing and crossing. Anything that was broken, which I didn't find on this tree. And branches that were growing inward towards the tree or towards other branches and thus restricting the air flow through the tree. Now the last thing that I'm going to do is prune the suckers from around the base of the trunk. These little tree wannabes here are suckers and they come off of the roots of trees like apples. And apples are known for having suckering shoots coming up from their roots. And the reason you get rid of these is because they actually compete with the tree for energy. And if you let them go, you can end up with a thicket of growth around your, the base of your tree, and that will actually harm your tree by com competing um, with it for water and nutrients. So you want to get these off. You want to keep up with this on a regular basis because once they get thick, um, not only do they steal more energy from the tree, but they're also difficult to remove. And for one of these, I'm going to need to use a lopper. 
Which is way over here. The more you can remove of the sucker, um, the better chance you won't have a huge thicket um, coming back. So that's how you remove suckers around an apple tree.